So last time we learned how to find the intercepts of a graph, and so this time we're going to learn how to graph a line in what we call slope-intercept form. So slope-intercept form, this should be something you guys are familiar with because slope-intercept form is in y equals mx plus b format. That's what we call slope-intercept form. And the reason we call it that is because it has two pieces. It has a slope, which is our m, so this part is our slope, and it has a y-intercept, which is our b-value. So it has a slope and an intercept, therefore it is called slope-intercept form. It's important to remember that our y-intercept, our b, is always in the form of 0, comma b, where b is a number. So in the equation, you also have x and y, and x and y are um, an ordered pair an ordered pair that represents a point on the line. An ordered pair that represents a point on the line. So that is what our, in our ordered pair are, x and y. They represent a point on the line. And that could be any point. There's a bunch of different points it could be. So as far as slope goes, there are th several different ways that we can define it. So one of those is the definition we gave last time, which is the steepness of the line. So it is the steepness of the line. It is also our m value in our equation, y equals mx plus b. And it is also the per amount. And this particular definition will make more sense in a second. So there are several ways we could express this in fraction form. We could say that slope was our rise over our run. This is something you guys have all heard before. We could also say that our slope was our change in y divided by our change in x which another way of saying that is it's our change in our independent, I'm sorry, our change in our dependent divided by our change in our independent. Because dependent is our y's and our independents are our x's. And the last way we could write last way we can write this in a fraction form is we can use the triangle symbol and do triangle y divided by triangle x. Now the way we actually say this is that we call this, and you don't you do not have to write this, we call this delta y divided by delta x. That's the Greek letter delta, but what it means is it just means it's another way of saying the change in. Okay, so you may see that from time to time, but this symbol, this triangle here, is just a way of saying the word change in without actually writing the word change in. It's just a math symbol. So probably the most important definition and the one that you're going to hear the most is the phrase rate of change. You have to know this one. This one is super duper duper important. Rate of change. One of the most common missed questions on any standardized test or any test in general is they'll say what's the rate of change of the line and people miss it because they don't know that rate of change just means slope. So sometimes our slope can have units, and this is where the per amount comes into play. So think about phrases with the word per in the middle that you might hear. Like a very common example is you might hear miles per hour. And this is a way, this is just representing a slope. So our slope would be the number of miles driven divided by the number of hours. Another example that you might hear is you might hear cost per item. So notice when I draw this divide line here, this division line represents the word per. So another example that you might hear is you might hear feet per second. 
Okay, so all of these are different examples, and they're not the only examples that exist, but these are some examples of slope as far as it having units. So the y-intercept is called a couple different things. It is called our b beginning, because it's our b value. It is our beginning value. It might also be called our initial value. It's sometimes called a constant. Remember, a constant is a number without a variable. And lastly, it is also sometimes called the starting point. It's important to remember that for the y-intercept, remember that x is always 0. Okay. It's also important to remember that it is in the ordered pair, and we mentioned this earlier, that it is in the ordered pair 0, comma, some number, which that number is we represent by the letter b. If we have a graph, well, our y-intercept is easy because our graph, our y-intercept is the point where the graph crosses the y-axis. So in this case, the y-intercept would be at 1. In an ordered pair, it would be the ordered pair 0, 1. If we're looking at a table, it's super easy because all we have to look for is we have to look for where x is 0. Well, look, that's where x is 0. So this particular ordered pair here, 0, 1, is our y-intercept. So our y-intercept in this case is the ordered pair 0, 1. So we're supposed to identify the slope and the y-intercept for each of these graphs. So we have several different graphs here. Let's start with our y-intercepts because that's pretty easy. We're good at those. So I will always draw my y-intercepts in blue because they're my b's. So for this particular problem, number one, I have a vertical line. So here's my line. And I'm trying to figure out what the y-intercept is. Remember, the y-intercept is where the graph crosses the y-axis. So this is my y-axis that I've drawn in green. Notice my line, which is orange, and my graph, which is green, do not cross. So this line and this line never touch. In fact, they are parallel. So that means that this particular line does not have a y-intercept. So we're going to write that there is none. We cannot write that the y-intercept is 0 because that would tell me that it's crossing the, the y-axis at 0. Let's look at number 2. The y-intercept is the point where the graph crosses the y-axis, which is here. So in an ordered pair, that would be 0, negative 2. In problem 3, again, the y-intercept is the point where the graph crosses the y-axis, which would be here. And that's at 1, so in an ordered pair, that would be 0, 1. And lastly, again, the y-intercept is a point where the graph crosses the y-axis, which is here. Now, it doesn't have a number there, so we have to go back and figure that out. So if this is 0 and this is 10, then this right here must be 5. So it goes up by 5. 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. So that's, this particular point is the ordered pair 0, 35. So now to find our slopes, we're going to start back over. When we have a graph, okay, so when we have a graph, to find our slope, we are going to rise and run. That's what we're going to do to find our graph, our slope of our line. So in order to rise and run, I need two points. So I'm going to find two points on my line. So, oh, they gave me two, this point and this point. So I've got to figure out what my slope is. So I'm starting here, and I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that tells me that my rise is 8. My run, well, my run is how much I have to go over, but I don't have to go left or right any because I'm already at that point, so my run is actually 0. So my slope is 8 over 0. Well, the question is, what the heck is 8 over 0? If you try and put that in your calculator, it's going to give you an error. That is because this line has a slope that is undefined. 
I'm just going to write the letters U and D. So this particular slope is undefined. And it's important to remember, and we've said this before, that if it's up and down, it is undefined. So an up and down line is undefined. Looking at number two, we've got to find our slopes. So we're going to pick our points. They've already given them to us, which is very nice of them. So we've got to figure out how to get from this point all the way up and over to this point. So I'm going to start with my rise. So from here, I go up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So my rise is eight. And my run is one, two, three, four. So it'd be eight over four. It may help you to draw a line connecting your two points together and then counting that way. That may be beneficial for you and actually writing in your steps. So eight over four, well, I can reduce that because eight divided by four is two. So my slope of this line is actually two. Looking at number three, I've got to find my slope, so I have a point here, and I have a point here. So I'm going to rise and run. So my rise is going to be one, two, three, four, five. And then my run is going to be one, two, three, four, five as well. Now, notice that I went to the left. If I go to the left, that makes it negative, and if I go down, that also is a negative direction. So either left or down are both going to be negative directions. In this case, I went left, so notice I wrote a negative 5 here. So my slope then is going to be positive 5 because that was my rise, and my run, so it's going to be over, my run is negative 5, so that's going to be in the denominator. Well, 5 divided by negative 5 is negative 1, so my slope is negative 1. Looking at this last graph, I've got to find two points. So notice I've got a lot of points here, and it's important to understand what a good clean point is and what a bad point is. So I want to go back and look at two really quickly and show you what a bad point to pick is. This point right here is a bad point. So this one right here. I would not use this point because it's in the middle and I don't want to use that. So when I want a good clean point, I want a point that goes through a line like this. Where Notice it goes through the axes and the line all intersect together. So for this one, thankfully all of my points are good clean points. So here's a point and there's a point. It's not going to matter which two you use you're going to end up with the same answer no matter what. So obviously I rise and run to get from one to the other. You have to pay really close attention though because notice that on this rise, yes it's just one step, but this go from here is 10 and this is 15. So my rise is not one, my rise is actually five. My run is how I get from here to here. Well, they didn't fill in my numbers at the bottom, so let's do that. So it goes 0, 2, 4, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So each of these represents 1, so that tells me my run is 1, and it's the left, so it is negative. So my slope is going to be 5 over negative 1, which is negative 5. So moving on to our tables, the last way to find the slope that we have to talk about is to use the slope formula, which is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. This is my slope formula, and you could actually use this on all those points as well on the previous one. So to use our slope formula, the first thing we're going to do, the first thing I like to do every time is draw my fraction line and put my minus signs in. So then all I have to worry about is putting in my numbers. So I need to pick two points. So I'm going to write that down. I'm going to pick 
two points. It does not matter which two points you pick. It will work either way. So let's suppose I picked four and negative two and two and negative two. So I'm gonna color code these to help us out. So these are my Y's. And these are my X's. My Y's will always go on top. So I'm going to put negative 2 on top. And then underneath that, I'm going to put positive 2 because that was this first point here. Then on the other side, I'm going to put negative 2 on top and I'm going to put positive 4 on bottom. And that's how I set up my formula. So then you could use the calculator. You could do this by hand. Either way is fine with me. If it says 2 minus negative 2, whenever you have this minus negative, that really changes this to a positive. So it's negative 2 plus 2, which is 0. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. And 0 divided by negative 2 is 0. So the slope of this line, the rate of change of this line, is 0. Looking at problem 6. We have negative 3 minus 1, or sorry, we have a bunch of different points. Negative 3, 11, negative 1, 3, 1, negative 5, and 3, negative 13. First thing I'm going to do, just as before, is I'm going to draw my fraction line and put my minus signs in there. And then I'm going to pick my numbers. So I always circle my points because I think it's incredibly helpful to do that. So I'm going to pick, we're going to do negative 3, 11, and 1, negative 5. doesn't matter which point you pick, it will work every time. So remember that my y's are going to go on top. So that means that my 11 and my negative 5 are going to be my numbers on top. So 11 and negative 5. And then on bottom, I'm going to put my x's, which are negative 3 and 1. So underneath the 11, I have to put the negative 3. And underneath the negative 5, I have to put the 1. So notice that these two, so notice that these two represent an ordered pair. They're this ordered pair. And also that these two are an ordered pair. Okay, so the order matters. So now we just do the math. Well, the math is easy. 11 minus negative 5, remember that's going to become 11 plus 5, which is 16. And negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. And 16 divided by negative 4 is negative 4. So our rate of change for this line is negative 4. And lastly, this table over here. So the number of songs in, is on the left, and the cost in dollars is on the right. So we're going to pick two points. It doesn't matter which two you pick. So I'm going to pick these two. I'm going to draw my fraction line. I'm going to put my minus signs in there. Remember that my y's go on top. My y's in this case are my c's. So I'm going to put 693 and, and 297 on top. So my y's in this case, I'm sorry, my x's in this case are 7 and 3. And remember, the order matters, so since 693 went first, 7 has to go first. And since 297 went last, 3 has to go last. And then we'll just do the math. So 693 minus 297 is 396. And then 7 minus 3 is 4. Well, I need to divide this, so 396 divided by 4 is going to give me point ninety nine so that would be my slope for this problem would be point ninety nine so I promise the second page won't take near as much time so recall that the equation of a line is always in the form of y equals mx plus b and that m here is our slope and b is our y-intercept. So 
if it's asking us to find the slope in the y-intercept and it gives us an equation, well, that's actually really easy because my slope is simply the number in front of x and my y-intercept is the number by itself. So m for this problem would be negative 3 over 4 and b for this problem would be the ordered pair 0, negative 2. So there's my slope and my y-intercept. The only problem, however, is that sometimes the equation isn't solved for y, which just means that we have to solve this. So for solving this, we need y's on one side and everything else on the other. So the first thing we need to get rid of, well, there's three things actually. Let's start there. The 6x has to go and the 4 has to go. So we are always going to get rid of this whatever term is separate. So we're going to get rid of this 6x first. So we're going to minus 6x to both sides. So we have 4y equals 24 minus 6x. Notice I don't combine these together because this one has an x with it and this one doesn't, so we cannot put these two together. So our third step, which is pretty easy, is we are simply going to divide everything by 4. So we get y equals, well, 24 divided by 4 is 6. 6 over 4. I can't divide that evenly, but I can reduce it, and it will become 3 over 2x. So my job is to identify the slope and the y-intercept. So remember that your slope is the number that's with x. Your y-intercept is the number that's by itself. It's our constant. So my slope in this problem, my m, is going to be negative 3 over 2. And my b in this problem, my y-intercept in ordered pair form, is going to be 0, 6. So we're going to move on to number 10. We have 3x plus y equals 0. So again, I need to solve this for y. So I need y's on one side, everything else on the other. Well, the only thing that should not be on the left side of this line is this 3x. So to get rid of this 3x, I'm going to minus 3x from both sides. So I get y equals, well, 0 minus 3x is just minus 3x. So my slope is the number in front of x, which is this number. So that's easy. My slope in this case is simply negative 3. My b value. Well, notice that in this problem, there's no number, like no constant, no plus something or minus something. So what that tells me is that technically there is a plus 0 there. So my y-intercept would be 0, 0. That's what this means. So the third thing, the next thing we're going to talk about, and the last thing really we're going to learn that's new, is we're going to talk about how to graph a line. So when we graph a line, it's really easy. The very first thing we do is we plot the y-intercept. And the second thing we do is we rise and run with our slope. Now, sometimes we do have to solve the equation first, so that's what we're going to have to do for problem 11. So we need to solve this for y, which means we want y's on one side and everything else on the other. So the only thing that's really on the wrong side here is this 2x. So to get rid of it, we're going to minus 2x from both sides. So these cancel, and I get y equals 2 minus 2x. So I just learned two things. Number one, I learned what my slope was because my slope is always the number attached to x. And I also learned what my y-intercept was, because my y-intercept is always the number by itself. So my slope is negative 2. My y-intercept is going to be the ordered pair 0, 2. So let's go ahead and plot that. So we're going to move over here. So my y-intercept of 0, 2 says I go up to 2 on the y-axis and I put a point. So that's where my first point is. So my slope was negative 2 over 1. So I want you to think, remember, this is your rise over your run. 
So if I'm rising negative 2, think about the direction that that means you're actually going. Technically, that means that you are going to be going down. And the 1 is positive, so that means we're going to go to the right, because that's a positive direction. So this is how we're going to plot our slope. We are going to go down from, so we start here. This is where we begin. This is our starting point. It's our initial value. So we're going to go down 1, 2, and we're going to go right 1, and this is where our point is going to go. Then we're going to repeat the process. We're going to go down 1, 2, we're going to go right 1, and that's where our next point is going to go. Then we're going to do it again. We're going to go down one, two. We're going to go right one. And that's where our next point is going to go. Notice I'm out of space. I can't go any further. So I'm going to stop there. But I do want you to understand that you could also go, instead of going down and right, we could do the opposite of that, which is to go up and left. So this is another set of directions we can go. So we're going to go back here to our starting point. And instead of going down 2 and right 1, we're going to go up 2 and left 1. And notice that this point is on the same line as the other points. So now we can connect our dots. So there's my line. So the next question asks us what the y intercept or the x-intercept was. Well, we could find that a couple ways. Number one, remember your x-intercept. is the point on the x-axis. So our x-intercept would simply be this point right here because this is our point on the x-axis. Or we could do the cover-up method. Remember the cover-up method says that to find our, our x-intercept we simply cover up y. So our equation is really 2x equals 2 to solve this, I'm going to divide both sides by 2, and x equals 1. So my, my x-intercept in this case would be 1, 0. It also tells me that my 0 is just 1. Because remember, you're for your 0, whatever this number is, is the same as this number. My 0 is the same as my x-intercept, always. So the question asks us, what form is the given equation in? You need to remember that this right here, this form that we had originally up here, is called standard form. So the question asks us, what's another way to graph besides using slope-intercept form? Well, we did this last time. We can find our intercepts, we can actually find and graph our intercepts. Okay, we can actually just find and graph our intercepts. So we have a couple of word problems we're going to do. So number 12 says a linear function f models a relationship in which the dependent variable decreases 6 units. That sounds pretty important, so I'm going to highlight that because I feel like it's going to matter. So it says that the dependent variable decreases 6 units. Well, is my dependence my x's or my y's? That is our y's. So what this is telling me is that my y's are going down 6 units, because that's decreasing. For every 3 units, so this also seems pretty important, so for every 3 units that the independent variable decreases. So my independents are my x's, so this is telling me that my x's are going, if they're decreasing, they're going to the left, three units. So I've learned two things. So it says if f of 0 equals 4, complete the following. So when they've given us this f of 0 equals 4, remember that normally we don't have f of 0, we typically have f of x. So normally we have f of x. So if they're putting 0 in the parentheses, then what they're telling us is that x is 0. 
That's what they've told us. So that means I have an ordered pair and the first half is zero. And remember, f of x is really the same thing as saying y. So when they're telling me f of zero equals four, they're really telling me that four is y. So I have a point, zero, four. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna plot that. And I know that because x is zero here, because this is zero, this point is my y-intercept. So I'm gonna plot that first. I'm gonna plot it in blue. So then it tells me that I need to finish graphing this and the question is how am I gonna do that? Well, thankfully they gave us plenty of information because they told us which directions we needed to go. It said that it decreased six, so I'm gonna go down one, two, three, four, five, six, and I need to go left three, and that's where the next point on my line is gonna go. Well, I can't go down six and left three again, so I'm just gonna connect my dots, and there's my line. So the question asks, what's the slope? Well, this is the slope because we went down six, so that makes it negative six, and left three, that makes it negative three, and a negative six divided by a negative three is a positive two. So that's my slope. The y-intercept, we already know that. We know that it is zero, four. My x-intercept, however, we haven't talked about that yet, but remember that our x-intercept is the point on the x-axis, which is right there at negative two, so in an ordered pair it would be negative two, zero. So last problem. A submersible that is exploring the ocean floor begins to ascend to the surface. It's important to note that the word ascend means rise. The elevation h in feet of the submersible is modeled by the function h of t equals 650t minus 13,000, where t is the time in minutes since the submersible began to ascend. So we're actually going to do this out of order. We're going to first find the x-intercept and y-intercept. And actually, very first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the y-intercept. So notice that this equation that we have up here is actually written in y equals mx plus b form. So that tells me that this 1300 is actually my slope, or my, sorry, my y-intercept. So I already know that my y-intercept is zero comma negative 13,000. I also know that my slope is this other number. So my slope is the 650. So we're going to come back and we're going to interpret them, but right now we're just writing what they are. So it's 650. So my x-intercept, well, remember my x-intercept is just another word for my zero. And we learned last time that if we have an equation like f of x equals 650 x minus 13,000, then to find my x-intercept, I'm sorry, or my zero, all I have to do is mark out f of x and instead write zero equals 650 x minus 13,000. Well, this I can solve. So to solve this, I'm gonna add 13,000 to both sides. So that's 13,000 equals 650x. So then I'm going to divide both sides by 650. And I get that x equals 20. So that is my final answer. So that's my x-intercept is 20. So now that I have those, I can graph this. That will help tremendously. The question is, how do we graph it? What scale do we use? Well, if we need the x's to go all the way up to 20, then it's probably a good idea to label these as 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. So we can get our x's to go by 20s. Now for the negative 13,000, that's gonna be a whole other ball game. 
And the best we're going to be able to do here is we're going to have to go by two thousands. So this is going to be two thousand and four thousand, six thousand, eight thousand, ten thousand, twelve, and fourteen thousand. And these are negative because I am below the x axis. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plot those points. So my x intercept, remember, was 20, 0. So that's here. My y-intercept was negative 13,000 and 0. So that's going to be between 12 and 14,000, which is about here. And then I can connect my dots. So the question did ask us actually to interpret all these and to identify the domain and the range. Well, remember your domain is your x's. So my domain is my x's, which in this case is actually my t's, and t is my time. So my domain is asking me about my time. Well, I found out my x-intercept was 20, so that means 20 is going to be my maximum number in my domain. My minimum number, so think about time, you can't have negative time, so my domain is going to start at zero. It's going to have x, t in the middle, because that's the letter, and it's going to have less than or equal to. Because what this means is that we could actually have zero minutes, or we could have 20 minutes. So the question says, a submersible that is exploring the ocean floor has ascended. So this is the function telling us that it's it, where it is after t t minutes since it uh, began to ascend. So what this x-intercept means is this means that it took 20 minutes to ascend. That's what that means. So now we're supposed to interpret our y-intercept and find our range, or recall that my range is normally my y's, in this case it's h of t, which represents the height. So my y-intercept, remember, was negative 13,000. So what this is, this is my beginning, remember that's my y-intercept, it's my beginning value. That means that's where my graphs, my submersible started. Was it negative 13,000 feet? Well, eventually that graph's going to get to the um, sea level, so it's going to be at zero, and my height is going to be in between negative 13,000 and zero. So what this y-intercept means, asked me to interpret it, is this was how far below sea level it started. So this is how far below sea level that the submersible started.